Misogyny? What is that? Do explain. Hatred of women. Yeah. <laughs> Very <Disease>. good. <laughs> yes. I think one of the recent occurrences that we can talk about in relation to misogyny in K-pop is Day 6 J. So honestly, a lot of, lot of thoughts. So for the people who don't know, Jay, he, where is he from? Canada? America? I don't know. He's America, I think. Okay. California? Oh, right. Yeah. And he's in a JYP boy band called Day6. And honestly, I he don't He was. Listen. He was. <laughs> They're an actual um, band, band. Yeah, yeah, band. And like they're known for like their songwriting, and they play all of their own music. And they're considered, from what I've seen, more artsy and more yes. like actual artists, not yes. necessarily idols. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Jay. So as we said, he's from California, so he's like native English speaker guy. So he's mm -hmm. always invited onto like those programs where people speak English and stuff. Like, um, and so another idol in the industry who does that is Jimin, not the BTS Jimin, but the female Jimin who has amazing heavenly pipes. And they are on a lot of these programs together and they are like very close friends, I would say, at least on screen, right? Like, you know, you see them hanging out quite a lot more than you see other idols typically hanging out, which is why there's it was- kind of a, Yeah, there's kind of a gang of like the English speakers. Yes. Not yes. necessarily native to Americans, but like people who are idols and also speak English yep. a lot. Um, I believe that Jay and Jimin have known each other since she was 14 and since he was 20. Yeah, they're from the so they met same agency. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So they spend a lot of time together. Exactly. They see each other a lot. And so the thing with Jimin is that as she grew up, you know, she's um, been more confident with her body and she's, you know, owning it. Love it. We love to see it. And Jay, he, I don't know, he moved back at some point to the US or like he was visiting and stuff. And then he started Twitch streaming. He's a pathetic Twitch streamer. No, now. don't say that. Um, he's going to get his fans after us, but I don't know. He has if, fans? I don't know. Probably. He was on stream talking smack about Jimin or Jamie as she goes by as well. And he was saying, like, the most ridiculous shit. He said, like, that, um, like, don't, now that, like, he's not really an idol anymore or something, like, he was like, oh, I can say this. And he said, uh, why is, uh, you know, Jimin being, like, a thought? And for those who don't know, thought basically stands for, like, that hoe over there or, you know, something along the lines. It's AAV, so it's yeah. African American Vernacular English. Yeah. So it's a, um, he shouldn't be saying it. Period. In general, uh -huh. yes. But also, he then tried to claim later that he didn't know what it meant and thought it just meant, like, a sexy woman. Even if he didn't mean it, like, in the way that the phrase was originally intended because, oh, I don't know what it means, bleh, He still said it, if you watch the original clip, like, it was a derogatory term. Exactly. Which it is a derogatory term. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, like, you could see, like, from his expressions and everything, like, he meant it as, like, something, like, bad. Yeah, and, and then he, he laughed about it. Exactly. And he was saying that, oh, I thought it meant baddie or something. But just in general, why would you like be talking about your friend who's an idol like on your stream just like unprompted? Unprompted. Like I think I have the original clip if you would like to hear it. I would I would love to hear it. Anymore, I could say this. Now that I'm not a K pop anymore, I could say this. Why is Jamie trying to be a thot? <laughs> oh my god. It's so bad. <laughs> Yikes. That's right. I said it. Tell her. I said it. I feel violence in this Chili's tonight. Literally. Okay, and a lot of people are like defending him, saying that, oh, it's because like his mental constitution is not all, is not great right now and whatever. But like, I don't think that should be a justification. I don't think that has anything right? to do with it. Yeah. So are you telling me that his coping mechanism for his mental illness is uh, slut-shaming women? That's yeah. his coping? Oh, yeah. I slut-shame women to cope. Yeah, yeah, I know. And it's like using it as a punchline. And then, you know, I think like later on, like Jimin like called him. And I can't even imagine being in her shoes. Like, in, like I can't imagine like a guy friend saying shit like that about me and then me having to like confront him, you know? If a man that I was friends with said that about me to my face, I would mm. kill him with a rock. And if I found out a man had said that 
to his like followers online yeah. in my back, I would kill him with a bigger rock. Like I would drop it on his head, like Looney Tune style. Yeah. Yeah. But the absolute betrayal and then like the embarrassment that like a a, a guy that you trust is talking about you mm -hmm. like this mm -hmm. to other men essentially mm -hmm. and the thing is like it's not just like uh, we're using him as an example here but it's because he has a platform to talk about shit like this right and then like like he said you know he's out of the you know he's not really active right now so he gets to say shit like this but how many of the men that you stand are actually like this you know like you don't know that they don't interact with women you don't see them interacting you don't they're not hear alive their... within 30 feet of women. I know. Like, <laughs> like you don't know what they're thinking. So, like, for for people and fans and everything to be like, oh, my God, like, he respects women so much, you know, about men who just don't interact with women. It's, like, crazy. Like, and you need to think about it more, about the fact that you don't know these people. Anyways, yeah, there's also another story that I kind of um, have been seeing recently about a producer named Ryan June. Have you heard about this? Fuck this guy. Right? A giant cactus. Yeah, so the the tale goes, well, it happened. Um, I think it happened sometime last year or something, and then he um, is a producer, makes music and shit, and then he, people were asking him, you know, like, oh, like, what, like, why have you been producing so much for ladies? Um, female idols and everything and then he was he used a very like derogatory term describing female idols I think that combines um, the Korean word of like vagina and then like idol and he combined those words and then he was like yeah I guess I produce well for these groups and using like that, that derogatory term and then afterwards he came back around and then was like oh I didn't know the negative meaning of the word like how can you not like according to Google which I believe it's literally a Korean word, and it's like um, a short, like it's like the shortened version of vagina. Like, how can you not know that? Like, if I called someone like a vag, whatever, like I would know what that fucking means, you know? We have seen this excuse for blackface, mm. for like saying the N word, for racism, for homophobia, and for misogyny. And I just want to say, well, it's almost always horseshit. You do know. Mm. Like you said, it's a Korean word, you know what it means. But also, even if you don't know what it means, you should still be able to see the impact that what you said had or know that what you said was derogatory because that's the way that you meant it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you should still apologize for that. Literally. Can we talk about why this Ryan guy has come up recently? The mm -hmm. girl supergroup, G.O.T., uh, Girls uh, on Top? Yeah. With their lovely song, Step Back? I genuinely just hate the vibes of that song so much rancid like so i already was a big fan of the music like it's it's okay it's fine i kind of see what they're going with it you know like sort of like dissonant organy sounds and everything but i was hyped at first you know like i saw boa Taeon, you know like i was like the lineup was supreme and i was like fuck yeah you know like we get to see you know all these amazing talented women um and then the song came out, and I was like, what? <laughs> and then um, my Korean friend, thank you for um, pointing it out, she texted me about it. I forgot what we were talking about, but then this came into conversation. And then she was talking about, you know, like how it was all hyped up, um, and how it was female empowerment, whatever. It was like marketed that way. And then the lyrics are just the worst. And the lyrics basically are talking about like how other women should step back <laughs> from their man. I have the lyrics here. So it's basically the gist of it is like, oh, like, who do you think you are? Like, you better shut up. Um, did he have a crush on you when we played like a baby when we were young? I don't know. That's really weird. Uh, playing with your childhood memories. Is that fun? I just don't get why they would sing a song like this. And then it says, take your hands off mine. You know, you won't... It won't be enough even if you're born again. I heard that Boa was actually like a producer for that song as well, which is greatly upsetting. I don't know, like I just don't understand why they would go for a song like this. I feel like someone along the line should have said, just in like the broader sense of what's happening mm -hmm. in South Korea, mm -hmm. we should not release this song. Yeah. Especially to a group of high-powered women 
from this company. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. Because, like, you know, in Korea, like, feminism is actually seen as quite a derogatory term. Like, feminist is the same as, like, a misandrist. You know? Yeah, Joy had that whole scandal just because she recommended a book. Which is like, wow, well-read woman. But, yeah, she got into, like, this whole big thing. And then, you know, like, anyone who even remotely comes close to per- portraying themselves as a feminist, I think, like, someone from A-Pink, maybe, like, Na- like Naon or some- someone, they, like, literally just posted, like, a shirt or something that has, like, you know, like, women are... I don't know, can do anything or something like that. And then people were like, oh, she's a feminist. And then like it started being a thing. And then some ladies um, have been posing, doing like the little pinching motion, um, just like for fun or whatever. Like, and, like not saying anything about men at all. And then like, you know, these uh, sort of like men activists have come up and been like, oh, they're mocking like small penises and whatever. And then it's just weird. And then even outside of K-pop, this is the culture um you know the i don't remember her name but she's the archer in like the men's women's duo for the olympics and she's amazing like she's so good I, they won you know they won a medal and she started being like people started like making fun of her and this is like a fucking national like this is a champion this is a national treasure you know and then they're like saying that she's a feminist and then like her short hair and whatever, and it's, like, crazy. It almost seems, conspiracy theory for me time, it almost seems like the GOT group was Mm -hmm. meant to fail, or meant to do poorly. Mm -hmm. Could it be? I think there is a clear example, I don't know if we're going to talk about distribution of resources yet, but there's a clear example in how, like, uh, girl groups and boy groups are treated by companies when you look at super m versus Mm -hmm. the got group right they clearly did not promote got very well yeah they had one stage Mm -hmm. like one live performance i think Mm -hmm. they they didn't have a music video did they i don't think so they only had like a live performance type of thing compare that to super m yeah Dropping. Do you dropping. remember dropping? Yes. Do you remember when dropping came out? When I'm jumping, jumping and hopping, cool. whatever. No, they're jumping and popping, you oh, idiot. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But there is a clear difference between the way that Super M was promoted and the resources that they <laughs> you got. You mean sperm? Uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and the way that the GOT got group was promoted and the way that the resources that they got for their comeback yeah. and their promotion. Yeah. And, like, it's crazy because, to me, like, these these individuals in GOT, <laughs> makes you think of Game of Thrones, but they are, like, literally such established, like, individuals and stuff. And Bo is still, a 20-year veteran of the industry. I know. She's insane. And, like, they still, like, couldn't do them justice. So there's this idea that girl groups don't perform as well as boy groups, mm-hmm. either on the charts and financially they don't make as much money. Hmm. And I think what we have is a perpetuating cycle here Mm -hmm. where the idea is that girl groups don't make as much money. So there's no point in uh, devoting as much resources to them as there are for boy groups. Mm -hmm. So when companies form girl groups, they don't spend as much time promoting them correctly. Mm -hmm. They don't book them on variety shows as well. They don't make sure their comebacks are good. They don't hire good producers. They don't hire good choreographers because it's just a girl group and they're not going to make that much money anyway. And then because these girl groups don't have the same access to the resources that boy groups do, or they don't have the same amount of money devoted for their group, they don't perform well. Yeah. No one will say that CLC failed as a group because their music wasn't good, although Helicopter was kind of sketchy. They didn't do well as a group because Cube completely underutilized them, Yeah. messed up with their contracts, it didn't promote them correctly. Mm-hmm. And didn't give them a chance to shine. So it's like the caught in the cycle where girl groups don't make as much money. And everyone knows that. So you don't spend as much money on them. Yeah. Because you're not going to get as much money. So then they'll never do well. And it's just yeah. a vicious cycle. Yeah. There are exceptions, of course. Oh, like in the industry, think of women and female idols as like the longevity of their careers are shorter for whatever reasons. Maybe it's because they just hate women after they turn 30 or whatever. We see groups like fucking what's that group called super junior and like they still have music like once in a while like 
Yeah, girl groups suffer from what's called a seven-year curse, which mm -hmm. is basically seven years after they've formed, they've kind of outlived their usefulness to the company, and they get replaced with a newer, younger, fresher girl group. Mm -hmm. I, honestly, coming into K-pop, I knew that mandatory enlistment was something that male groups dealt with. Mm -hmm. So before I knew anything about K-pop, I assumed that male groups would have a shorter shelf life because yeah. their careers are interrupted by the mandatory requirement to serve in the military mm -hmm. for a period before they turn 30. So I was like, okay, so men are done when they're 30, pretty much, and we know that going in. And mm -hmm. so girl groups should just be able to continue uninterrupted because mm -hmm. they don't have to serve. Mm -hmm. Imagine my surprise <laughs> when... Um, <laughs> The opposite. A, yeah. A, EXO has had members in the military for, I think, three or four years now. Yeah, it's insane. And they're still having comebacks with whoever happens to be around at the time. Right. You know, like, there's, like, all these, like, idols and stuff, like, men, who um, are like, oh, hi, I'm married, gonna have a kid now. And the people are like, sure, they get some flack for it and everything. But imagine if a woman, imagine if a girl idol was like, hey, I'm pregnant. Oh my, oh my god. Oh my god. Can you imagine? People would literally be like throwing such a huge fit. Like I would fear for this woman's safety. Like if anything like that ever happened, you know? I would be afraid for her life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. On a less serious level, there's like uh like Virgin, I think from Itzy, like she was talking about like how like people would make comments, night comments about like how you guys are amazing for girls, you know, that kind of stuff, which is, like, common. I think, like, a lot of women have heard that in their lives, like, oh, you're smart for a girl, whatever, for a girl. And, <laughs> yeah, but it also just, like, is perpetuated. Like, okay, for example, Jenny in, um, what's that song? Love Sick Girls or whatever, and she's dressed up as a nurse, and people threw a huge fit over it. Enough that it got removed from the music video. Yeah, and, like, I just don't understand the internalized misogyny or whatever of, like, other women saying that, like, oh, yeah, it's um, harmful towards nurses. When in music videos, like, BTS's um, Dope or whatever, they were, like, dressing up as, like, various career careers, like, professions and stuff. Like, why wasn't yeah, the anyone... Old bitch, yeah, the old bitch who should be in the military and somehow isn't, he was dressed as a doctor that whole time. Yeah, like, what's up with that? And I really, really don't think Jenny's outfit was anything horrendous. No, like, it wasn't that scandalous at all. Yeah, it wasn't like fucking like lingerie or shit. Like it was just like maybe like a shorter skirt than what would be accepted. But and no one thought she was genuinely a nurse. You could see that it was like some kind of like fucking joke Halloween about Halloween costume. Yeah, yeah, and like you can see that it was a joke. It was like, you know, um not joke, but like it was parodying like the whole like, you know, a psychotic nurse whatever. I don't know. Like it's a trope. The whole song was lovesick girls, right? Yeah. So she's a nurse. She's yeah. lovesick. She's I ill. Exactly. I would like to see more of this sort of behavior towards Joker and Harley Quinn's relationship than just Jenny wearing a fucking costume. So as much as racism is just bad thoroughly in general, I also think that women in K-pop get more flack for it. I don't oh, know. absolutely. Yes, definitely, right? It's not just me. But yeah, like people like say, like people are always talking about like Wendy and recently like Giselle. And of course, what they did, not good. Don't love it. But I'm pretty sure RM Namjoon, rap a monster from BTS, also has used the N word. And then people are just like fine with it and say that he's grown. And like, oh wow, look at his philosophical equality supporting man right now. And I, yeah. So what Wendy did was do an impression of black people that was incredibly racist, yes. which was bad, and she shouldn't have done that. Exactly. But multiple members of EXO have made colorist comments. Mm -hmm. Multiple members of EXO have done, not blackface necessarily, but Chen did like kind of an impersonation mm -hmm. with like big lips that was a Jim Crow kind of parody. Right. Bad. Very bad. Mm-hmm. Right, and like you said, BTS has had numerous incidents of racist behavior. People still hate Wendy. Yeah. People edit her out of comeback photos. Yeah. They edit her out of stages. Mm -hmm. They, like, edit songs so that she's not present. They make fun of the plastic surgery they ha she's had. They make fun of, like, her injuries when she got injured a while ago. Mm -hmm. And like I said, what she did was racist. But people don't have the same energy for women doing this kind of thing that they do for men. Yeah. Another example I can think of is Irene and Ming Yu from Seventeen, because they mm. both had bullying scandals happen around the same time. Right. Irene was locked in the fucking basement. Yeah. 
They had fan signs get canceled. They had performances get canceled. No one saw her for like a year. Mm-hmm. Minkyu had the similar scandal break, except his was not a staff member. It was like a girl from his high school who said that she he had been bullying her. Worse, and had made, honestly. Like, sexualized comments. Yeah, that's worse to me. <laughs> well, and people were immediately like, oh, she can't prove it. Mingyu is so nice, and he's so tall, and he's good at cooking, so there's no way that he bullied this girl. Yeah. There's a defense of men that women don't often enjoy, or like yeah. women don't see the benefits of in K-pop. Yeah. They get punished doubly for whatever mistakes they make in their career, like we said. Mm-hmm. Mingyu had no repercussions whatsoever. I don't even think he had to apologize. Yeah, he didn't even hear about it that much. Nope. Yeah, and when like people attack, like female idols were doing whatever that they did, they, like, go above and beyond to, like, insult their character and everything like that instead of just, you know, talking about the situation. And it's just, like, yeah, so sad. Like, with um, Sujin as well. Like, I understand what she probably did was kind of really bad, but, like, there are also other idols who have had these sort of scandals and just, like, men, that is, and just haven't really faced much. Big Bang is getting a comeback. Oh my god, yeah, I saw, like, there was They're this... having to come back. I know, there was a cover with, like, Top on it, um, yeah. Them, like, being willing to come back on the, like, as together, like, as Big Bang and everything. Like, if some of them remained in the music industry, maybe I would understand, you know, it's a career and shit. But, like, at this point, they're just, like, I just... They do a lot of really shady things, and, like, Sung Ri's stuff is especially very bad. Because, you know, it's very dark and shit. But I swear, like, the others must have known about it to a certain degree. I absolutely refuse to believe they had no idea. Yeah. I just refuse to believe it. I'm like, there is no way. Men like to brag to other people or to other men about this kind of shit especially. I'm like, there's no way that you guys didn't at least benefit from this Mm -hmm. somehow. Although, again, we're not really here to discuss, like... Whether True. Some great- True. Like, I've read this interview. I'll try to link it if I can find it. Um, and this journalist was basically saying that, you know, she was interviewing the um, the escort services and stuff like that. And they were saying that, like, just how tied to the situation YG as a company is. Like, like that YG as a company engages in those services. Like, the- allegedly. And allegedly. it's not just, like, Sung Rhee as an individual. You know? So it's, like, it's an industry thing it's not just like a couple of bad eggs or whatever do you want to talk about how women in k-pop are constantly over sexualized and then yes. shamed for that over sexualization that yes. other people are pushing on them yes definitely that's a fun cycle yeah the shit that they have to wear sometimes first of all while dancing is crazy it's bad yeah it is What's your thought on people who say that, oh, but men are objectified too in K-pop? Men are objectified in a way that makes them powerful still. Mm. Like, a man flashing his abs on stage is seen as like, oh, look how like hard he worked on his body. Oh, he's so sexy. Like, he's such like a manly, strong, masculine, testosterone-filled creature. Mm. And if a woman, like, I think... First of all, women aren't allowed to do some of the same stage dances that men do. Mm. And there's been multiple videos pointing this out. Yeah. But girl groups will have choreography that's, like, slightly suggestive, and they won't be allowed to perform it. Yeah. Like, Exit um, had Exit, exactly. choreographies banned. AOA had choreographies banned. I know. Like, some of those, I think, was it Stella or it was, like, another band as well who, like, literally had to do a lot of these, like, super suggestive um, dances and music videos and stuff to, like, help them survive. AKA help the company survive and yeah just them having to like do that it like takes away the autonomy of the situation and yeah like if they if if the women did this and they owned it and like like uh Jamie Jimin for example like she owns it you know like and she loves it and and I'm happy for her for that but like if they're forced into it then that's like really horrible um and also there's the whole idea that if men like for example Ace? Was it called Ace? I don't know. Like, they wore, like, shorts. And, like, sure, yes. they got a little bit of, like, you know, backlash from that. But at the end of it, it's kind of portrayed as, like, them defeating the gender stereotypes and whatever. And I'm like, yeah, good for them. But, like, women wear worse shit, like, all the time. <laughs> and, like, sometimes don't want to. 
It's like, oh my god, we saw your knees? That's <laughs> crazy. Crazy. And then Stellar is also very fucked up. Unfortunately, their songs Sting and Vibrato are, like, two of my favorite songs ever. Unfortunately? <laughs> I know. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Because they were the group who, after they disbanded, came out and said that a lot of the dances that they were doing to, like, Marionette and Vibrato... Vibrato is a highly sexualized yeah. music video. If you ever mm. watch it, there's a lot mm. of, like, vagina imagery mm. in the bridge. And I like the girls are literally trapped in like glass mirrored cages. Yeah. And which would be fine if they were a group like Exit later in their career who did like sexual choreography. It's like everybody in that group is over 25 and mm. they were fine doing this. But the mm. members of Stellar specifically said they did not want to be doing what they had to do. Yeah. But it was the only way their group could survive. Yeah. And then they're slut shamed. For being forced to do something that they didn't want to do anyway. Yeah, that like people wanted to see, you know? If an, if the idol owns up to it, like what we saw with Jimin, then like they call they get called a thought. Like, I don't know, man. Like no one wins ever. If they always do a similar concept, they're called boring and predictable. If they try out a bunch of different concepts, they're like not predictable enough or they don't have like a solid concept. Right. If they do cutesy concepts, they have no range, and they don't have the ability to do, like, badass girl crush concepts. If they only ever do sexy stuff, they're sluts. Dude, they also dude. don't have the range. I love the way that, like, girl groups in K-pop just innovate and constantly come up with new shit. Like, I, I don't think they're, like, trend chasing at all or not having a sound, because they do. And I think it's amazing. The one song that I've liked from a boy group recently would be like Fever, and then I learned that the kids were very young, and then now I'm just a little bit horrified. But other than that, yeah. like literally everything on my playlist is like female music, and I think th the same is can be said for you. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I first heard well, you were playing like um, Unit or Uni dot T. I don't know how you call them. They're gone now. Goodbye. So sorry. But you were playing uh, no like, more yeah, time. and I was like, fuck yeah. And I was like, I don't think like anyone else in this town right now is probably listening to this. <laughs> you were like, I knew you were cool then. I know, exactly. And um, yeah, like I don't even know what the boy, the boy equivalent, uni, uni B, UNB or whatever we're doing. I don't even know a single one of their songs. But anyways, iconic. I was also thinking about like how Leah from ITZY, I've seen like a lot of hate videos about her. Um, just people pointing out, like, how she's completely out of sync and how, like, you know, whatever. Like, she's dancing differently. And, like, yeah, sure, she isn't the strongest dancer. But a lot of BTS members are also kind of bad <laughs> dancers. Maybe now they've improved and shit. But, um, like, just historically, they've had bad dancers. And no one... People think of it as cute and, like, whatever. There Leah, you go. I know, like, Leah has amazing vocals, but, you know, just because she dances poorly. Like, she's keeping up with these four other amazing, talented dancers. I think that's really already very good. And, yeah, whatever. And she's one of the vocal back like backbones of the fucking group. Somebody's yeah. gotta sing. I know. Like, people would be like, oh, because Jin is vocalist and, like, um, a rap monster, obviously, rapping. You're right. It is, like, kind of an infantilizing thing where they're like, oh, yeah, it's cute. Yeah. Like, it's cute that they're not good at it. Yeah, yeah, it, like, uh, humanizes them or whatever. It also kind of reminds me of the way that Jenny was treated when people said she didn't have stage presence or she was being lazy. Insane. Crazy comment. Mm -hmm. Versus, there was a Stray Kids member, I don't remember which one, who was kind of acting the same way or, like, wasn't, like, doing all his all-in performances. And all the comments yeah. were people wondering if he was sick. They're like, oh, is he overworked? Is he getting sick? You know, like, I feel so bad for him, that kind of thing. Yeah. It's like, maybe it has something to do with the way that, like, especially women tend to, like, treat Asian men like they're infants. Mm. I don't know. Mm. Which is a racist issue in and of itself. Yeah. But, like you said, men and women will do the same thing, and men get, like, sympathy, or it's yeah. seen as cute. And women, it's, like, a horrible thing for them to do. Yeah, I've only ever heard... Um, about female idols being called lazy. Like Wonyoung, recently, by just not flipping her damn hair. Um, and with like, I don't know, like just any, like I've never- member, I think. Yeah. Like, a Red I, Velvet I, member, I think. Exactly. I think Irene was called lazy at one point. Yeah, and then like members like Nancy from Momoland would be talked about like how her attitude is bad. 
But like, there's literally been that one time where like, I don't know who, um, was it? Taemin? Oh, uh, yeah. Like, he literally was just, like, leaving the stage. You know that scene of him, like, leaving the stage, like, before they even end? And, like, funny. But, like... Cute. Funny. Yeah, cute. Funny. He looks hilarious. He's, like, caught, you know, red-handed. But, like, if a woman did that, you know, they would be like, oh, fucking disrespectful. Or there um, was this whole scandal where one of the girl groups didn't bow to BTS appropriately or, like, on time. And they were like, that's so fucking disrespectful to your seniors. And I'm like, first of all... I won't get into my BTS feelings here. But, like, first of all, <laughs> if a male group did that, there would not be the same backlash. Yeah. There's just so many double standards. There just seems to be an assumption that women are all doing this intentionally, and that whenever yeah. men do it, it's like a funny, cute accident. Yeah. Like, men are never given the assumption that they could be intentionally doing this kind of behavior. Yeah, they don't, I don't know, have it's to interesting. have accountability. Yeah, it's like the whole idea of, like, how, like, girls have to, like, mature faster and shit, and, you know. And when, when boys do things, it's just boys being boys. It's almost right. like it's a repetition of that. And they're wow. like, well, girls mature faster. I'm like, do they really? Or do you just expect them to be more mature faster and boys are allowed to be children longer? Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I guess that's our conclusion. Um, Stan women and hold men accountable and rethink your internalized misogyny okay first of all i want to speak directly to the ladies in the audience if you are a girl that's like oh i don't listen to girl groups because all they ever do is cutesy stuff and i can barely stand it stop it yeah get some help yeah you're not impressing anyone you're not not like other girls or whatever the fuck vibes yeah yeah you have some issues that you need to work out internally yeah, but and Black we look Pink forward to that. Be, yeah, Blackpink is not going to be the girl group that is just so good it saves you from being a girl group stan. Mm -hmm. Listen to other groups. Yeah. And just because a song is cute doesn't mean it's not fun. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. In fact, we only became friends because when you heard I like K-pop, you were like, okay, what kind? And then I showed yeah. you and you were like, okay, I was we're like, cool. valid. Very Ding. cool. I know. Literally. What if though. I said I like K-pop and I just showed you my playlist and it was just only BTS? I think I would have not talked to you. <laughs> I would have just left. Like, oh my god, seriously, I did have like a coworker who was like, oh my god, I'm 70 K-pop, and then like she starts going off about like BTS, and I was like, I am never talking to this girl ever again. She was like a freshman. She like her dad was like someone on the admissions board. It was kind of really weird. Like I should yeah, and then she would like leave work like hours early. Um Without telling anyone except for me, which, like, I had no control. Like, why, why are you telling me, for of all people? But yeah, it was crazy, and then she started going off about, like, BTS and how, like, how much she loves them and shit, and I was like, nah, never again am I interacting with this girl. Okay, well, I'm gonna say bye to the audience. Bye! Would you like to say bye? Bye to the audience! <laughs> bye.